Hey guys, welcome back to another Cinema 4D tutorial. As the title says, we're going to continue on with the Sub D modeling series. And I think for this one, what we're going to do is actually go back and redo one of the older ones. So in lesson 13 of this series, I went over uh, how to create the helical style bottle threads, like on the top of a bottle where the cap would screw on. And I showed you a little trick that you can do in order to create that spiral effect. Uh, but I decided to go back and redo that one because I wanted to try another method to see if it would work to where you could actually model this rather than using that trick. So uh, this one's going to be about the helical bottle threads again, but uh, this is going to be an updated version of it. Okay, so as you can see here in the viewport, this is what we're going to be creating. Uh, this one here has just a really short little loop or spiral uh, thread here, but the one we're going to be creating has more than this. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so uh, what we're going to do first is just kind of get an idea of what we're going to be doing. And uh, usually what I like to do is start out with a cylinder. And I went ahead into a top view and I went ahead and changed the grout shading and wireframe here to view over to that because by default it won't let you see all these extra subdivisions. I think by default it's set to isoparms and I think it's set to lines. And you can see here it's it's kind of hard to see what's going on. So I usually change uh, the shading here right away in order to see things. Okay, so uh, by default we've got 36 segments. Now personally I think that's a lot for what we're going to be doing. And usually when I, you know, whenever I create a cylinder, if it's going to be something very simple, I usually start with eight segments. But let's be honest, eight segments for this, that is nowhere near enough geometry. We're going to need a whole lot more than eight. So let's try to go up to 12 maybe. No, that's still not enough. Maybe 16. Eh, I don't know. I think we need more. So maybe 20 maybe we ought to just go a little bit more and let's go to 24 so I think 24 segments on this will be enough geometry for what we want to do so I'm just going to turn off the caps because we don't need them and what I want to do now is create the helix spline I need to change the orientation I'm going to pull this up a little bit to give us a gap between the bottom and where the thread count is going to start and we also need to do the same for the top. So I'm going to take the height and just pull that down to maybe about there. Now this cylinder, we need to give it uh, a value here. Let's just give it a, a value of 100 just to kind of clean it up because we don't want some random value like we had before. We'll just keep it like, yeah, because there it is, 107.603. Okay, yeah, let's just even this out to an even 100. Okay, so now we're going to click on the helix spline and the start radius and end radius. We want to make 100. Okay, so now it is the same side. It's touching the faces of, the, of our uh, cylinder. But that's not enough spirals for me. I want some more. So what we want to do is go to the end angle. And it's currently set to 720. That means it's wrapped around uh, 720 degrees. But I want to double that up. So let we could do an inline calculation here. So we got 720 times two, or you could do 720 plus 720 if you wanted. That gives us 1440, and I think that should be enough here for what we want to do. Okay, now some of you might be thinking the next step is to probably take the knife tool and make some cuts, right? No, not really, and here's the reason why. And trust me when I say this is not the way to do it because I have tried almost every method to do this and unless I've missed a step somewhere this is just not the way of doing it so if we were to take the cylinder and make it editable and then we'll go over here to, into point mode and we want to grab the line cut tool and if we were to hold down control and put your uh, if you take the cursor here and put it over the actual spline and hold down control 
for some reason, there it goes. You can see that now it's highlighting the spline. And if we click, you would think that it's made all those cuts perfectly around the entire cylinder, right? Well, no, because look what happened. And now that's just one giant mess. And I have tried various ways of getting this to try to cut to make this spiral cut all the way around because that would actually be the quickest way of doing it but unfortunately it just does not work that way and unless I've missed something I don't know how to do it this way uh, I don't think that this line cut tool has the ability to actually cut along this spline and just follow it all the way around now it wants to make the cut even if we were to do visible only and turn that off and say go to a side view and try to do the cut again you can see it went all the way through but it's it's made a huge mess and that's not even a spiral that's just it's just a mess so that is not going to work in this case so I'm going to show you another way of doing it so what we're going to do is create a let's see we want a polygon I'm going to hide these two things for the moment we're going to take the polygon and I'm going to change the value here to 25 by 25 and we'll change it to plus X and I'm going to make it editable and I'm going to change the Fong tag to 80 and if you've been watching my tutorials you know why I do this is because 40 is too low we need to uh, set it up to about 80 because we're going to be working with uh, subdivision surface and 40 will often cause problems so we're going to change that to 80 and what we're going to do now is we're going to go over here and enable the axis tool and we want to turn on snapping but we also want to make sure that edge snap is turned on I'm going to pull this back over here just so it snaps or the axis will snap to that edge I'm going to turn that off so I'm going to hold down the alt key and I'm going to, let's see, there's the cloner. So hold down Alt and click to clone it. That's going the wrong way. So what I want to do is I want to change the value here from Y to Z. And it needs to be 25 because remember we made the value for the polygon 25 by 25. So what I want to do is I give this about 96 segments. So that means the count here needs to be 96. And we'll talk about why I'm making it 96. Uh, a little later we'll get into that, but uh, right now we're gonna make it 96. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is let's uh, click on the cloner and make that editable. And we want to select all of these polygon objects. Use the connect objects plus delete command and we're going to need to run and optimize on it really quick. And I'll tell you what, let's leave that inside of the null because we're going to use a modifier here. So let's go up here and grab the spline wrap and we'll drop the spline wrap inside. And anytime, at least this is the way it used to work. I don't think Maxon has changed it, so it still, sh it still should work this same way. But uh, anytime you have a spline wrap dropped inside of a null, it will affect all of the other object there with it. So you don't actually have to make this a child of the polygon object here. Uh, you can just drag it and drop it inside of the null along with it and it will affect it. So we want to click on the spline wrap and we need a spline and more than likely we're going to need a rail. Uh, but let's do the helix spline. Helix spline will go in as the main spline. And we're going to need to play around with this for the moment. So let's uh, change it here to, oh, no, that's not it. I think it's probably going to be plus Z, okay? And we're going to need a rail spline to help with this. Because if we go into the rotation, let's see, can we get, uh, let's see, where's our up vector? Let's see if we can get an up vector to kind of help us out here. Okay, that's not really working. Banking. Okay, so that's not really going to work. We could probably just use a rail spline. So the way this works is just duplicate the helix and then drop that duplicate helix. Uh, let's see where are we going. Let's drag and drop that into the rail spline. And of course, it becomes a mess. 
And I think what we should be able to do is just drag that up a little bit and that becomes the rail spline and that will now smooth things out for us. We can actually hide those two now. Okay, so if we turn on the cylinder, notice here that our polygon object, all of the segments in it line up with the segments or the vertical segments here of the cylinder. So we know that this is all lined up properly. All right, so we know that that's lining up now. So what we could do is a current state to object. So let's hide the cylinder because we're not going to use that. And normally what you would do is you would right click on the actual object that's being deformed or modified. And you go down here to current state to object. And you would take that and drag it out. But notice that by dragging it out, even if we dragged out the other one, they're now being straightened out again. So that's not going to work. So the way to do this, because we have both the object and the spline wrap inside of the null, is to do the current state to object command on the null. So right click, current state to object, and now we can hide that one and get that out of the way. And now we can use this one. So we can check the normals to make sure they're facing the right way. So in polygon mode, just hit control A and for those of you that are using an older version or even a newer version of Cinema 4D, it should still be the same unless you have changed the default color or if Maxon changed the color in R19 or R20. But the orange color here on the face represents the correct forward facing normal. So you want to make sure that it, the color of the polygon is orange. Now if we do a UR to reverse it, you get this blue color. And blue is the wrong way. So that is uh, anything that's going to be on the outside that's going to be affected by rays, which would be reflections or light or anything like that that's going to be seen. Just make sure your normals are facing the right direction. In this case, that's represented by the orange color. So you are again to reverse it just to make sure that all the normals are facing the right way. Okay, now there's a couple of ways that we could do this. Uh, you can actually do an extrusion outward if you wanted to, or you can do an extrusion inward. It really just depends on how thick you want the neck of this bottle to be. So what I'm going to do is go into edge mode, and I'm just going to do a loop selection around there, but I don't think I really want to select that end edge or this one down here at the bottom. So we'll deselect those for now. And I'm going to grab the scale tool. And what I want to do is I want to control click and drag inward to make the extrusion inward. But watch what happens. All right, so you can see that they're not being extruded incorrectly. And the reason why is because uh, whenever you do an extrude like this, uh, it's being extruded and all the values are being taken from all three axes, X, Y, and Z. So it's actually pulling in those extrusions in towards where the axis handle is at, which is right there in the center. So rather than do it that way, I don't want to have the Y value affect the extrusion. I only want X and Z. So I'm going to put the uh, cursor over the Y handle. I'm going to hit Shift. That will deselect Y and select the other opposing axis handles, which is X and Z. And then I'm going to hold down control and then I'm going to click and drag and that will extrude those in. Now this just depends on how thick you want this to be. I think more than likely somewhere about right there will be okay. So again, in case you missed it, with those edges selected, I'm going to put the mouse over the Y handle, hold down shift, then control, then click and drag to bring those in. And I think I want them to be, I don't know, maybe about right there. Okay, so now we need to start filling in these gaps. So to do that, what I found the easiest way to do is just use the path selection. So we're going to choose U, M, and we want to start here in this corner at the top. And we just want to run around and let's go a little bit further and I'm holding down shift to make multiple selections 
and then we want to do the top of that row there and go around follow it around to where we stopped right there and we want to go to the stitch and sew tool hold down shift and then click and drag down to fill that gap in okay then back to um for the path selection hold down shift for multiple selections so we'll go a little further this time all right and then back over to here for some reason my mouse is not wanting to click on that just right we'll follow that around there back to the stitch and sew hold down shift because if you don't hold down shift what it's going to do is it's going to weld those together to create one edge and it's going to make a mess so make sure you hold down shift and that will actually create the faces between these two edges all right we got just a little bit more to go so back around here This right here will probably be the longest and most tedious part of this whole thing. And then back up. It's not really taking that long to do it. To there, stitch and sew. And there we go. So now what we want to do is let's do the path selection again. We'll start at the top and we'll work our way around to about there. And rather than go all the way to the end here, I'm just gonna leave a gap there. And we're gonna do a control extrude up. And we want to zero this out for the Y. Let me bring that down just a little bit. And we'll do the same down here on the bottom. So back to the path selection. We'll go around. And I made a mistake there. That's okay. We'll go back to it. And we'll go right there. We'll leave the gap. We'll deselect those and select that edge there. And we'll do the same down here. Zero that out on the Y. Looks pretty good. And this should be a pretty easy fix here. Basically, all we're gonna do is grab the pin tool, the polygon pin tool, and we're gonna hold down control and we're gonna fill in the gap. We're gonna bridge that gap. And if we click from this point over to this one, it should fill that in for us. Okay, we'll go down here to the bottom and we'll do the same here as well. And then we'll click from this one over to here and it will fill that in. Now, again, we wanna make sure that all of these normals are facing the right direction. And you can see that some of them are not. We actually have some there that are reverse. So in order to do this, just hold, I'm uh, sorry, not hold, but you're gonna use UA. So hit U and then A to align them. Now, sometimes when you align them, it may align them in reverse. So after doing a UA command, you'll have to do the UR which is the reverse command to reverse them all. All right, so now let's create a subdivision surface. We'll drop this inside. We'll see what it looks like. Let's change the display over here. All right, so that's not really looking all that bad, but I want to sharpen these up a little bit. You can see we've got a little bit of a problem there in the corner. I think that can easily be fixed if we just go in here and let's make some, well, first we need to clean that up. We'll grab the loop tool and let's do a loop selection cut there and then one there and that tightened that up a lot that actually looks pretty good i like that that looks pretty good all right so now we can go back to edge mode we'll grab the top we'll pull those in to about there Extrude those down 
and we could probably do the same for the bottom uh, but since the bottom is actually going to be going into the shape of a bottle uh, you don't want to close that off like that so what we want to do uh, let's see we could probably just extrude that down scale it out a little bit down a little bit more out So maybe something like that. We're not going to go too far with this because we're not actually going to make a bottle. All right, so something like that I think would be okay. And we're probably going to need to make some cuts at the top. We turn this back on. That lip is looking a little weird. So let's grab the loop tool again. We'll make a cut on the inside, one around the top of the lip. We'll hold down Shift and uh, click on this little orange triangle and you can lock it into increments and we do we just want to go to about 50 percent and then we want to make another cut up here now notice this cut is being a little weird and the reason for that is because remember we left a gap there and this comes to an abrupt stop and doesn't flow around so what we need to do first of all is change the offset mode to edge distance and now we can probably click right about there and then just use either the polygon pen tool or the knife tool here and just finish that off. And of course, I forgot to do single line. And there we go. So we'll pull back a little bit and take a look at this. And we'll spin around really fast just to see how these look. Of course my mouse is not working right that actually looks pretty good all right so I think that about wraps up this tutorial this actually turned out pretty good and of course uh, you know again your bottle threads you may want them to look a little different uh, this is just me making some very quick bottle threads uh, you may want them uh, grouped a little more tightly together you may want less or more of them but uh, the idea is the same here. You could just use the helix spline to determine, you know, how many wraps you want and uh, the distance between them. All right, so I think that pretty much covers all of this. Oh, that's right. I uh, almost forgot. We're going to talk about 96, why I said 96 segments. Okay, so uh, here's why I said 96. Let me hide this for the moment. Okay, so remember the original cylinder that we had and it had 24 segments so when I first did this the first thing I thought of was I was going to take uh, the sweepner with a let's see here uh, with a rectangle spline and I was going to drop that in and the helix spline would go in next and then this here would be down let's try something like okay so 25 25 for somewhere around there let's just make it maybe a little bit smaller and change the display so we can see it all right so obviously right now this sweep nerve has way too many segments or way too many subdivisions in it what we want to do is I wanted to be able to line up the uh, the segments here of the sweep nerve with the segments or these vertical segment lines of the cylinder that way it would make it easier to connect the two together. So what I did was, so let's see, let's make another one. This is gonna be the, uh, the rail spline. Just pull that up. Okay, hang on a second. We need to go into the sweep. Let's do scale, we'll deselect scale. So now we'll take this one and pull it up. All right, there we go, that's better. And I'm gonna, turn the caps off for this okay so as you can see it's got way too many segments in it and if you click on the sweep nerve object and go into the object tab here uh, there's no way to control the subdivision segments on it I mean you've got isoparm subdivision but that's not doing anything at all so the only way to really control this is to go into the helix spline and then go down here and change the intermediate points to uniform and take this down to a value of zero. 
Now notice it's looking better, but you can see that the edges here, or the segment cuts, the edges lines here for the sweepner, they're not lining up with the cylinder. So the way to do this is we have to reduce the number of subdivisions here in the helix spline. So if we take this down to 96, notice now that they're all lining up, or at least they look like they're lining up. And the reason why they're not lining up perfectly, because if we go up here and zoom in, notice that there is a gap there. And if we look up here at the top, there's also a gap there as well. Now I tried to go through here and solve this gap, but unfortunately I could not do it. I had tried various methods in order to try to get things to line up, but in the end I just kind of gave up on it because it was taking too long and the method that we used in this tutorial with the cloner object and the spline wrap, that method actually uh, was a lot easier and a lot quicker versus using the sweep nerve here to try to get things to line up right. All right, so in the end, that's why I used 96 segments because the subdivision count here was 96 for this. So I knew it was going to be a value uh, of 96 in order to get this to line up with our cylinder, which had the uh, segment count of 24. All right, so now we got that out of the way. I think that now wraps this up and I think we're pretty much uh, done with this tutorial so as always thank you guys for watching uh, if you have any questions or comments about any of this feel free to comment below and I will see you guys in the next tutorial